All right, so we're recording now. All so right. uh, basically, this is just a larger version of the A5s that you're used to. So it has a heated plate, and then it has the same flex plate that you can take off and put back on there, too, so you can kind of bend it a little bit. But you can't quite bend it as much. It, right. it, it kind of barely warps. Um, you, but you can warp it enough to get, like, a spatula or something like that under the larger prints, and that helps a lot. Okay. Try to get it on there. The one downside to the lock builds is that if it's leveled too closely, it can be difficult sometimes to get the prints off of there. So it can like cement the first couple layers, excuse me, to the build plate. So that's the downside to it. So that happens. Like if it's hard to take something off or there's some like, excuse me, there's some residue or something like that that's stuck mm -hmm. on there. You can just kind of lower the plate a little bit more, like turn each one of the knobs about like a half a turn. Okay. And then do something else and uh or even the same model again and then just only let it do like the first two layers or so and then stop it you can just unplug it if you want and then you'll be able to scrape off that and then those new couple layers will have fused to the ones that were stuck okay. and peel right off and it's like, super fast to get it off um, all right you can also clean it with uh some acetone uh you can kind of wipe it down with that um or you can wipe it down with like 90 percent alcohol um, to kind of clean it off because like get the oils and stuff like that like off of there and 90 percent alcohol looks great um like the clean alcohol type stuff um but other than that if it gets dinged up like the one that i have is all dinged up too and you'll see there's stuff stuck on it and it's it's totally fine like it's made to it's made to take a lot of damage so you can just kind of okay. scrape her and scrape it flat again and and uh it'll it'll still keep on printing so all right uh so you got it all together which is That's awesome um, and the, the difference, as I mentioned, is because it's bigger, we just need to have a new Cura machine set up. And then we're also going to have to make sure that, that it's all the machine itself. Integrity is all good. And leveling is a little bit different because there's uh, four screws. Right. And stuff. I felt that while ago that there were four adjustments instead of three. Which is kind of weird. Um, and to get used to because it, it, you have to, it's a little, I think it could be a little bit harder than having three, too, because you got to make sure that each one of the four are like all level. So you got to kind of go all the way around the edge and then do the middle, too. Um, okay. Two on the front can be kind of too close, the two in the back can be too close. So it takes a little bit, but um, I'm sure you're fine with it. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, just a minute. I had a student come in. What you need? You make it very quiet, get it done. I'm in the middle of something here. Okay. So um, what we can do then is do you have Kira on your computer? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. So if you want to just go ahead and open up Kira, then uh, I'll show you those settings. All right. All right. There you go. I'll share mine with you. So we're basically going to set the size of the build plate uh, just like we would the other one. So. Uh, to do that, we're going to add a new machine. So well, across the top here, you'll be able to click machine and then add. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, find it? No, hang on. I got to get back. Somehow I wound up in full screen mode here. Oh, I'm sorry. Press escape and that'll get out of it. No, that's not doing it for me. Um, you should be able to, uh, like, Go up to the top right corner and you'll see like a little um, like exit full screen if you like move your mouse at the top. You see that? Mm, no, still okay. not getting nowhere. Maybe click on it, click on it, and then hit escape. Just click on the screen somewhere. Okay, there it goes. All right. All right. Okay, now I'm with your machine. Machine and then add new machine. Machine. All right, add new machine. This way, yep, set up Cura. Yep. All right, I'm with you. Next, and next. Then other, just like we did before on the other okay. printer. And then next, and then Mendel, just like we did before on the other printer. Right. So it's gonna use the same software. Um, and then we'll click finish. And then we'll set these settings up to be really similar. And then we'll set our build size to be the same. So the layer okay. height we need to point to, because that's the quality of it. And okay. this we can do 0 0.8, just like before. So it'll be two shells. And then bottom and top thickness will be the same as the shelf thickness. So that'll be 0 0.8 as well. Okay. And then you can leave your fill density or whatever you want. I'll go ahead and leave it at 20. All right. We'll leave our print speed at 50. Okay. And that's a, that's a great, uh, like, benchmark. And if you want to go a little slower than that, you can, uh, like, if you go down to 30, 
and then turn this layer height up to like 0.1, then it'll be like a really high quality print. You can actually do that on the A5s too. If you wanna have something that looks just awesome, it'll take a little longer, but it'll put those layers really close together and because it's going smoother, uh, slower, it'll be a smoother fuse together and it'll look really nice. So if you wanna turn it to, to that, you can. Okay. And then the temperature, we're gonna have it 220, just like the other one. And then the bed temp, we're gonna actually set to 50. So 50, 55 is about the maximum that these can print, uh, the bed temperature can heat up to because it has to, uh, the heater inside of it, like the core can only heat it up so much. So um, 50 is just a great place to start. Um, okay. and, and that's usually what you leave it at all the time for PLA. And that, the heated bed will help it to keep it from warping. Okay. It'll be fused to the edges. Right. And then support type, we can, say, we can say whatever we want. I can say everywhere, so if we want right. to. I played around with that song. Yeah, yeah, it helps a lot. And then brim and raft. Brim will act like suction cup lines around the outside of it. So it'll be like a bunch of lines around the outside of your model to help it from warping up. It'll basically help it to keep it stuck. So if you're having problems with stuff warping, you can turn brim on, and that'll help a lot. Um, okay. If you have a really intricate model with a lot of little tiny parts that are touching the bill plate and there's not a good flat surface, you can uh -huh. try the raft. And the raft will literally be an entire raft of filament, um, like a whole sheet of it. So it, it wastes a lot of filament, so you don't really need to use it um, for only very specialized uh, situations. Okay. And the diameter is going to be 1.75, just like the other one. And then the nozzle size is going to be 0 0.4. All right, nozzle size. Okay, hang on a minute. Okay. Uh... Oh, yours might be an advanced if you click advanced. Okay. Yeah, you might have like, like a version of Cura right before mine, which is fine. It still works great. This is last year's version. So, all right, nozzle size needs to be where? 0 0.4. 0 0.4. Okay. Yeah, and both that, that version works fine. Like, I think yours says 15, probably three right here. Does it say 15, three? Uh, 15.04.2. Point 0.2, okay. Yeah, it, it'll still work fine. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and click on machine and then machine settings. Okay, machine and machine settings. Okay. And then we're gonna change our width to 300, which is about 12 inches, by 300, about 12 inches, by 400. 300. And that's that 16 inches. By 300, by 400. Okay. And then is it okay? And then here's our massive build size. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the. <laughs> so you can print stuff on here for days. We printed, the longest print that we did was like 205 hours on one of them. <laughs> so you can print for a super long time. You can even like swap the filament out and print multiple rolls. Like it'll just keep going and you don't even have to worry about it. So um, all the other stuff will be just like before. Um, just when you want to switch back and forth between the machines, you'll click machine and then pick the machine that you have. So if you want, if you go back to machine settings, you can name the machine. So if you click where it says change machine name, okay. you can name this one like the A31. All right, well, I lost you there. Go to machines. Oh, machine and then machine settings. Right. And then change machine name. Change machine, ah, I see it. Okay, so this, and the one we just set up is the 31. The A31, yeah. Uh, or you can say you know massive printer or whatever you want to whatever you want to say. <laughs> A31 works good for me. All and right. Then click OK. And if you're on a Mac for some weird reason, it like puts it behind here. I don't know why it does that, but your Windows shouldn't do that. And you can just click OK. All right. And then now when you click machine, you can just switch back and forth between your different machines. So you have like your A5, okay. and then you have your A31. So you can go back and forth between them. And if you have something that's sliced for the A5 and you put it in the, uh, in the uh, A31, mm -hmm. it'll still print. It'll just print like in this corner right here in this like small area. Yeah. In the build area. But if you take something uh, from the A31 and try to print it on the A5, it'll give you what's called a, an, a bed heating error. So it'll say like on the bottom of the screen, it'll say like heating error. And if it does that, that's because it's trying to heat the bed temperature up. Yeah. First, and drink one. <laughs> yeah, and then it's just gonna sit there and get confused. So it's just gonna be stuck, and it's just gonna say like heating error, something along wow. those lines, uh, along the bottom of the screen. And if that happens, like if it just ever says like an error, then go ahead and just you have to unplug it, you have to power cycle it. So 
um, just to get rid of that. So just unplug it and plug it back in and then try a different file or make sure that your file is sliced um, for the A5. Because when we did the A5, we turned the uh, bed temperature off. So it shouldn't right. be. Um, but if it is, you can just set that to zero and then it'll be fine. Okay. And what this can be kind of hard sometimes for students to switch back and forth between the different machines to remember. So if you have students that are like running the slicer or anything like that, um, just make sure that they're printing it on the, on the right one. Okay. Right now, students don't touch this side of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, right they do design and bring it to me on a thumb drive, and then I take it from there. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine then. So then you got it. So um, everything else, though, is just like before. So, you know, you take that file, put it in Cura, save it to the SD card, all that, just like before. So okay. um, do you have any questions about Cura? So far, so good. I Like I say, I've played around with it quite a bit in the last year. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. So uh, now let's go ahead and plug the printer in. And uh, let's did you switch the little voltage right here on the side? I made sure it was set to 110. Okay, awesome. Yeah, go ahead and plug it in, turn it on. Okay, I got fans on, but uh, no display on the screen there. Oh, make sure that these, uh, these plugs in the back are plugged in all the way. Okay. They appear to be plugged in all the way. Plugged in at the top, we may not be. Hang on. Did it turn on? I still don't have a display. I don't know. Um. Can you, when you press the button, do you hear it beep? No, sir. Okay, so it might have come unplugged. So maybe it got kind of jostled or something in shipping. So um, we're gonna take it off. <laughs> so go ahead and unplug it. Okay. And we're gonna take the bottom um, off of there. Whoop. Okay. Because it just might have gotten a little shook up or something. So yeah, you can go ahead and unplug it. And then uh, the Allen wrenches are in uh, that little tool bag. Yeah. And they should be able to take these two off. Uh, these four. You'll have four. I just have two, cause, but uh, you'll have four of them. Okay. And then that'll come right off. Well, I'm not getting that one right. It fits. Um, it should be like the this size, like the second smallest one. Okay. The same one that you use for the spool holder. Oh, yeah. And then you'll have to take these off right here on the side, too. Okay. After you take the bottom off. I'm not getting out right fit here. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Do you have another class coming at like. Not until 1130. Okay. That'll be plenty of time. Yeah, it'll be the four on the bottom and then the four on the same side as the uh, power switch. Or the, you know, the two torque ones in. And you might have to hold it a little bit while you take that last one out.
One more again. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Played off. Now those four are on this side right here. So like here and here. I got those out. Oh, you did? Okay. So then just kind of stretch this side, stretch this a little bit, and then there's this little, like, lever right here, and you, this should be able to just pull right out. You just got to kind of bend the sides out because this little protective thing will keep it in there. All right. Yep, I got a cable on plug in here. Yep. Yeah, so it should be this one right here, this ribbon. Ribbon cable, yep. Yep. So it's got to plug in right here to the right of the pins and then into the – the screen right there. Sometimes that just gets jostled loose when they throw it around in the back of the truck. <laughs> All right, I think I see where it goes. Is it plugged into the board or into the screen? It's plugged in on the screen. It was not plugged in on the board. Okay, so it goes right here. It's got like a little slot for it. Right. Can you see it? Yeah, and it'll only fit in one way. I believe I got it. Okay, great. So before we put it all back together, um, let's go ahead and, and turn it on. So go ahead and plug it in and then and turn it on. Because it'll sit like this. It'll be fine as long as you don't touch it while it's on. And we'll just make sure that the screen itself uh, right. turns on. I got screen this time. Sweet. All right. So go ahead and unplug it, and then we'll put it all back together. And it helps to put the uh, power supply in there first. That's what I was doing. <laughs> okay, great. I do a good bit of mechanic work, so. Oh, yeah, right on. <laughs> you get to looking at things that way. Yeah, I like to take stuff apart and mess with them, too. <laughs> it's fun to find out how things work. Uh, 
care if you want to do chemistry while I do this. That, you know. <laughs> I'm probably still going to be doing this next hour. I'm just stay late. I've heard that clear class was a bear. I've heard that class was a bear. Yeah. All right, I'm back up and running. All right, sweet. So uh, this one has the on-off switch, which is nice, which is a little bit different. And yeah. then uh, to level the build plate, the, the interface is a little bit different than the A5 too. Um, yeah. So you'll tap this button, and then you'll move to setup, and then auto home. And then that will zero it out, just like before. Okay. We're adjusting now. And then when it stops moving, you'll go back to that same place and set up, and then you'll tap disable motors instead of disable steppers. All right. So did everything move all right when it was moving? Uh, yes, sir. Same too. Okay, great. Up to the point where it ran on the wall, then I moved to where it was sitting. <laughs> nice. That's one thing, and this is so much bigger than the other one, I had to relocate where I was putting it. <laughs> yeah, it crashed through the That's window or something while it's printing. Yeah. So uh, when it stops moving, we're going to go ahead and check and make sure, like, this doesn't vibrate. This shouldn't wiggle at all on the track. Does it wiggle? The outer cover does, but the head doesn't. The cover does a little bit? What do you – like uh, a little fan trail? This part does? Yeah. But the nozzle itself doesn't wiggle? No, it's not appear that the nozzle's wiggling. Oh, you might need to tighten it then, like right here. These two little right. bolts. All right. Yeah. Is that what looks like it's loose? Hang on just a minute, we'll make sure. Okay. Yeah, they're like right here on the sides. Okay, I'm, I'm good there. We'll All right. Awesome. So then now we want to make sure that the, this build plate, when you grab on the corner right here and try to wiggle it, it doesn't go back and forth like this. Okay. If it rocks back and forth, and, and then we're going to need to tighten it. I don't think it does. No? Okay, awesome. And then you want to make sure that like this doesn't wiggle too. So just we're basically just testing the integrity of it. So like just try to wiggle this in place and it shouldn't move at all. Okay, we're good there. Okay, great. If it does, they have eccentric nuts. Um, uh, do you know what eccentric nuts are? Right. 
Yeah. You gotta sell it on them. Exactly. Yeah. So they'll have those on one of the one of the three to, that you can tighten. Um, so then you'll be able to tighten one of those eccentric nuts and like keep it tight on the belts. Right. Um, okay. And then next we got all the plugs and everything that we're gonna check. So we got the Z's are right here, and we got our switch right here. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And then we got the X is right here, and then the X switch. X. X. Yes, sir. Okay. Awesome. And then the E is right there on the back with got the it. lever. And then the Y's are back here. Yes, sir. Sweet. All right. We're good. So then now we're going to, we're ready to level. So we can just grab our uh, piece of paper. Okay. And then we're going to fold it in half. All right. Move it to above uh, one of those uh, wing nuts on the bottom. And then it's going to be just like the A5. So you'll tighten this or loosen it on the bottom until you can drag the paper and you feel it dragging and vibrating with quite a bit of tension. So um, this one, I'm going to go ahead and turn it counterclockwise to make it looser or clockwise to make it tighter. Because when you actually tighten it on the bottom, it makes it looser on top. Just like the A5s. And you can push down a little bit and tighten if that's easier. There we go. And then it should feel a dragon. So then you'll have the metal heated surface and then the glass plate and then the flex plate on top of the glass. All right. Because you want to, you don't want to print straight on the glass because it, it sometimes is completely smooth, and you can also when you're trying to take models off, it can chip the glass into your models. So that's why we have the flex plate that sits on top of there. So the flex plate kind of keeps everything flat from the metal, and then the uh, the or the glass keeps everything flat, and then the flex plate just makes it easier to remove your prints because you can take it off just like you can the A5s. All right, you just want a good drag on that paper, right? Yeah. Yeah, get a good good drag and vibration on each one of them. And then just move to the next one and do the same thing there. And then once you've gone all the way around, then we'll do the same in the middle. There we go. Okay, I got all four corners. Sweet. And then just test it in the middle, make sure the middle's got a good drag too. Okay, I'm pretty loose in the middle. Okay. So you might want to go up just a tiny bit, like a, maybe a fourth of a turn all the way around. Okay. Up is counterclockwise? Uh, yes. Or count, yeah, yeah. And then try it now.
still loose in the middle. So what also helps sometimes on the 831 is to watch that your first like couple layers of the print and then you can do what's called hot leveling which sometimes can be a little easier on the 831 to kind of adjust these a little bit while it's printing until you get that good 90 degree angle of filament coming out and it's sticking real good to the build plate. So if you get it pretty close then that's good. But just like when the when it gets looser on the bottom it's going to push it up and make it tighter on top. So when you, yeah, when you loosen the bolts, it gets tighter on top. And then when you tighten them, it gets looser on top. Just like that A5. It's just a little bit weirder because there's four of them. All right. Okay, that feels, right in the very center, I got a little bit of a drag. Okay, yeah, that's all right, that's all right to start. Because what we can do is we can try, we'll watch it, and then we can do that hot level a little bit. Because you can adjust them just a tiny bit until you see the layer coming out. Because you want it to be a good 90 degree turn coming out from the nozzle. So it's, it's got a good flat line that's sticking to the bill plate. Because if it's too far away, it'll get stringy and it'll look like spaghetti, like you know. And then if it's too close, it'll just kind of like dig into it. So you got to try to find that happy medium. And then right. when you find it, then go ahead and, and kill the print and then reprint it again and just like scrape the stuff off and then reprint it again. And then it'll be exactly where you want it to be on level. Okay. Good to go. So um, loading and unloading filament is just like the other one, uh, except when you go to unload, when you tap the button, you'll go to setup. And then we have this button called preheat soft pull. So we talked about before, I probably talked about pulling it out when it's at a hundred degrees. Right. As a soft pull. So now this is that soft pull button that's in there so every time you want to remove filament you can just hit preheat soft pull and it'll just heat the nozzle up to 100 and then you can remove it and just okay. pull it down. Um, and then otherwise the preheat pla is the same and everything else and if you want to move the axis around like up and down you can tap the button and then go to controls mm -hmm. and then if you go down to the bottom you'll see move axis right here in controls and then it's right. just like the move axis before where you move one millimeter and then you can move the Z if you want, and then you can spin the Z and then raise it up. So just like the other one. Okay. So otherwise, all the other operation is just like the A5. So, you, you know, you want to make sure that the filament's all loaded all the way. You want to make sure that the bed's level. You want to make sure that there's nothing loose, it doesn't look broken or anything, which we just fixed. And then all your settings and cure. So all that kind of thing. So if you want, we can go ahead and print a test print that's on the SD card. All right. So if you want to load the filament in, and okay. it'll sit and, and spool up on this, and then it'll spool right in here, just like, uh, just like the A5. Okay. And then you'll just feed it all the way through the tube, and then we can go ahead and put the SD card in and, and print a test print on the SD card. Okay, hang on just a minute. Let me eject that card, because I had it loaded in case we needed it. Yeah, totally. Trying to find where it put it. So we'll take the filament, then we'll clip the end of it, just like we do in the A5. Clip all the melted junk off before we feed it in there. Just in case. And it helps to clip it at an angle, too, to make it easier to feed in. Okay. Let's see. And it'll feed right in. Then you push it all the way through, all the way to the end, so you don't feel it move anymore. I usually, when changing filaments, oh, uh, once it warms up to temperature, go and yeah. push it through until I actually see the color change. Yeah, you can totally do that too. Pull that little string out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can do that if you want. You can hit preheat PLA on the uh, on the 831 if you want to heat it up. 
just on setup and then pre PLA. All right. That's a good way too to just like purge out the old color and make sure it's all clear. There's no flaws right. in there. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, also, just like the A5, you never want to leave it heated and on and not printing for long periods of time. <laughs> I, I, I thought I had that disaster a while ago. I had the kids printing, and um, it, part of it broke off. Uh -huh. I had a glob there, and I stopped it. Oh, I yeah. turned it to cool the nozzle down, and 20 minutes later, when I looked back, nope, it was still at temperature. No. <laughs> no. But it, it started printing again just fine. All right, that's great, yeah. All right, let's see. Yeah, that's the one downside of hitting stop print is it stays heated when you hit stop print. So that's why we do is we, like if something's messing up, we just unplug it or turn it off. And then uh, I don't have to worry about doing it. Because I've, I've made that same mistake before. Yeah, I, I, I was going, oh, Lord, I hope this don't clog up on me and i got to clear that. But it, it went back to work, so. Yeah, that's awesome. Have you had any clogs? No, sir, I have not. That's good. That's great to so hear. I always, you know, as soon as it quits printing, it cools down, and pretty quickly I unplug it. So, yeah, that's great. Um, and any issues there at all? All right, I got. Uh, let's see. Okay, hey, we get some filament in there. I know. Right. Probably it's probably about time for you to go to class, I guess, too. So, yeah. That's all right. We'll go ahead and start it. They come to me. Oh, okay, sweet. <laughs> yeah, so you can load some filament in. You'll be ready to go. All right, I got it loaded, and we're almost to temperature. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I didn't see it on there. Do you have it, like, hanging up? Actually, oh, I don't, let me turn it where you can see it. Yeah. I got a wall rack. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> nice. So it's printing all these different colors to keep up with all them different spools. Did you get I built the kids first of the week? Yeah. Did you get the kids to build that? Or did you build that? I built it. Yeah. That's awesome. We don't have a wood shop here, unfortunately. Yeah, we've got. Here's our shop. Let <laughs> me unplug this one. Whoop. Yeah. So here's our shop right here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we've got these like wooden racks, kind of similar to that. All right. Let's see. I'm at print. Ready to go. Sweet. Yeah. So go ahead and tap it. You'll uh, just like before. You'll just tap the button, and then you can go to refresh SD card to refresh it, and then go to print from SD, and then you'll see test prints. Should be one of the ones on here. I've got a couple other things on here, so I don't have the test prints. But all right. um, uh, keychain and six-sided die. Yep. So just tap on one of those. Let's do the die. And then it, what it's going to do is different than the A5. It's going to heat the bed up first, and the bed takes the longest to heat up. So that's going to heat up all the way to temperature. So it's going to heat up to 50 first, and then the nozzle is going to start heating. Okay. So it'll probably take a bit. And then, like I said, just watch those first couple layers, and then you can kind of do some hot adjustments a little bit, you know, just to make sure while it's moving. Okay. Uh, adjust it by tiny amounts if it doesn't look exactly like you want it to, sticking out there on, like, those good 90-degree layers. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's, that's the only issue I've had so far with it was, wasn't leveling the bed just right, and it kept breaking off on me last year. And after I figured that out, we didn't have no troubles there. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's the hardest part is trying to – because it's – it's hard to figure out like how tall it needs to be and how close it needs to be. Um, and you got the feel for it on the A5, so it'll be just like that, just getting, getting it on this one. You'll be able to rock and roll. So. All right. Sounds like a deal. Wait, is it heated up then? Is it getting close? Uh, let's see. Bed's at 49, 50. Awesome. The nozzle's at 220. All right, great. Yeah, it'll get, it'll get ready to heat then real soon. And as soon as it starts – and I'll let you go after it makes make sure it's all working for you. All right. Do you have any more questions? I'm pretty good right this minute. Uh, like I say, having played with that other one for a year, it kind of helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good upgrade. I think you have to print some cool stuff. Do you have any, like, uh, class projects or anything in mind? Uh, to... Actually, I have a couple things off of uh, Thingiverse that I wanted to print, but scaling it down didn't turn out too good on the A5. Yeah. That's part of why I wanted this one. And then uh, this also let me do like these switch plate covers about two at a time is all I can do at one time. 
Mm-hmm. This one I ought to be able to do probably four at a time. So do the kids make the switch plate covers? Yes, sir. They, I gave them a plug box with a plug or switch mounting. Yeah. And they have to take their own measurements, design their own cover with special features. That's awesome. The one print yeah. right now has got dragon heads on it. Do you have a? Do you have one like an example that I can see? Uh, Cody, you still got that? In, oh, he broke the other one. This okay. one. What what do you, what program do y'all like design in? Uh, Tinkercad is what we're using right now. Right on. Uh, they looked at uh, which one was it? Sketch on shape. They looked at the on shape on one shape. a little bit, but we haven't played with it much yet. Yeah, and Fusion three hundred and sixty is good too, and it has the same camera controls as uh, as Tinkercad. It's just got a lot more advanced features. Okay, I had put a request in for us to look into getting a full CAD program. Mm-hmm. But I doubt that's going to happen. Well, Fusion 360 is free, so. Okay. All right, we're making motion over here. Yeah, sweet. How's it look? Uh... I think I'm gonna have to do some adjusting. Is it, it gotta be a little bit closer? I think, yeah, sure. I think I'm gonna have to get closer. Yeah, go ahead and turn each one of them about a fourth of a turn uh, clockwise. So turn each one of them this way and then see if that gets closer and then just kind of like watch it while it's heating and then get a little bit closer. Does that look a little better? Yes, sir. I think that looks better there. All right, awesome. All right, Chris. Well, you got any more questions for me? I believe not. I think we got it where we can play with it and oh, see what if I run into something, I'll definitely email you. Yeah, let us know because we're here to help and uh, have fun printing stuff. <laughs> I have. The kids have been about ready to shoot me over some of it because I keep making <laughs> them redo it because it don't fit. <laughs> well, now you got a bigger bottle, so you can get it to fit on there. So you're good to go. All right. <laughs> All right, well, I've had fun with it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, have a great weekend. All right, you too. See y'all. All right, bye-bye.